Let the feast begin. Food in movies. It is not something we often stand still and think about. But after this video, you'll never watch a dinner table scene in the same way again. That's because many filmmakers secretly use food as a tool to give insights into characters and to propel the story in a certain direction, like in this famous scene from the movie Inglorious Bastards. Monsieur, votre famille et à vos vaches. Je dis bravo. That's why we're going to have a look at some of the most iconic food scenes in the history of cinema and find out what food says about movie characters. But before we start, I want to thank Atlas VPN for sponsoring this video. Walter, are you playing Subway Surfers again? Look, I don't want to be that guy, but we're supposed to be in the video right now. If you love watching movies and series, I'm gonna make you an offer you can't refuse. Lots of movies and shows might not be available in your country, but by turning on Atlas VPN and selecting a new country, you can watch a lot more content from across the world. On top of that, your connection is private, they can't steal your data, all while streaming 4K at high speed. Right now, for only $1.83 per month. You might be thinking, impressive. Very nice. But there's more, because Atlas VPN is also an ad blocker and you can connect it to unlimited devices with a 30 day money back guarantee. That's right. What's the matter with you? Get the deal right now for 3 years and 3 months free with the link down below. Alright, now let's get into the video. God damn, Jimmy, this is some serious gourmet shit. Quentin Tarantino is a director that is known for his famous food scenes. His characters are eating and drinking all kinds of indulgent foods. God damn, it's a pretty fucking good milkshake. This is a tasty burger. It's like a reward. And even if they're not eating something, they're talking about it. Royale with cheese. Royale with cheese. That's right. Tarantino sure knows how to make an audience hungry. And by having the characters eat tasty nachos or sweet white cake, he's using food to establish a connection with the audience. When you see my movies, you know, there might be one drink or one piece of food that the audience fixates on. And the movie actually makes them hungry for that. They want that once they get out of the theater. I defy anyone to not want strudel when you see Inglorious Bastards. You know, it doesn't matter just the Nazi guys eating it. It's like, man, that, that strudel looks good. Also, who doesn't like watching Brad Pitt eat for 15 minutes straight? However, as soon as the audience starts craving for a little bit more... Please, sir, I want some more. Tarantino adds his unique flavor. In a Tarantino movie, one minute you're eating a Denver omelet, next minute someone's sticking a gun in your face. And it's at that moment that something seemingly insignificant as a hamburger can become quite significant. But that's just a hamburger. Wait till you hear about the oranges. Because this is just the beginning. It started as a mere coincidence in The Godfather. The set designer prepped several scenes with oranges to give the moody scene some color. But every time an orange was in sight, it didn't end well for a character. <laughs> and so oranges turn into a bad omen. In Children of Men, an orange is peeled in a back seat, and after that, all hell breaks loose. And if you still don't believe me, what about the scene in Requiem for a Dream, where the drug dealer is sitting in a delivery truck for oranges, peeling an orange, and then all of a sudden, they start shooting at the crowd, and it all spirals down from here. In Point Break, a man walks past and offers them oranges, which is followed by a robbery and many people being shot. Even in The Breakfast Club, the schoolmaster spilled coffee while eating an orange. In Breaking Bad, Ted Beneke slips and falls into oranges. In The Sopranos, two men attempt to kill Tony while buying orange juice. And I guess I don't have to explain what happened to Mr. Orange in Reservoir Dogs. Is it bad? As opposed to good? As we can see, food can take on a symbolic meaning and give us hints about what is going to happen next in a story without saying a single word. 
but what a character eats or drinks can also be used to give insight into a character's personality and help build a character. So let's have a look at a couple examples of how food can be used for characterization. Can I get you something, sir? Vodka martini, shaken, no stood. I'm sorry, we don't serve alcohol. I'm really starting to love this place. To quote director Paul Thomas Anderson, you can tell a lot about the person by what they order for breakfast. Want some bacon? No, man, I don't eat pork. Or what their favorite drink says about them. James Bond has been shaken by lots of experiences, but not so much that it stirred up his mind. And how it's ordered can tell us a lot about the person too. Fuck. Bitch. Tony Monero is a simple man. All he wants to do is dance. He comes from a poor family, and while the girl tries to fit into the upper class by ordering tea with lemon, he just stays himself. All those women executives in my office, they all drink tea with lemon. I like coffee. I drink coffee. Yeah. You know who that reminded me of? Al Pacino. Because in Scarface, Tony Montana eats a slice of lemon that is normally used to clean your hands with after a meal. But because he had a poor upbringing, this shows us he has never really been exposed to a rich lifestyle. They often say you are what you eat, which gets taken quite literally in the case of slave owner Calvin Candy, who is named after a sugar tooth. He's getting a visit from Dr. Schultz, who is a bounty hunter disguised as a dentist. And what is the biggest enemy of a dentist? Exactly, candy. Similarly, food can create stereotypes like in the breakfast club. Sushi for the fancy girl, lots of proteins for the athlete, a perfectly balanced lunch for the nerd, and of course, nothing for the bully. However, the whole point of the movie is to escape these stereotypes and not let someone else tell you who you are. What are you? An idiot sandwich. Idiot sandwich what? Sometimes it's when a character eats that can tell us a lot too, like Aldo Rain casually eating a sandwich during an execution. Spider-Man watching danger unfold and decides to eat a hot dog because he wanted to give up his superhero life and finally be a normal human being. But just like with the dangers of oranges, when a certain type of food or drink is used frequently for a character trait, it can become a trope as well. And the apple's one of those next. Stemming from the ancient old biblical sin, Adam and Eve lived in paradise in total innocence until the serpent, also known as the devil, enticed them to eat the forbidden fruit, an apple. As such, a bite from the apple can be used to indicate a character's loss of innocence and step to the evil side. This coincides with a seductive power, but can also be used to show a character's power and control over a situation. Similarly, milk is used as a symbol of innocence and purity. We all drank it as a child. Would you like a drink after takeoff? Milk? Just like with the forbidden fruit, filmmakers can use this association with innocence to make the audience feel that something is a little off. I drink your milkshake! And that's how milk can become a symbol of power. And it's exactly why villains are the ones consuming this pure beverage. It's evil defeating the good, indicating their loss of innocence. Colonel Hans Landa is establishing his power over the farmer and his family by devouring a glass of their milk. You're sheltering enemies of the state, are you not? Yes. And he does this in the strudel scene as well. He is forcing the Jewish girl Shoshana to eat the strudel with cream because she was hiding in the dairy farm. Proving his power and in the end, he destroys the cream with his cigarette. But food can also literally give a character power. Filled with hate and revenge, Old Boy eats a living octopus, which has the reputation of being strengthening in Korea. But the food itself can even become a dangerous weapon, like the peach fuzz in Parasite, used to poison the servant and infiltrate the rich family's house. And in some cases, humans themselves can become the food like in Hannibal the lecture. And in American Psycho, where the food in the opening credits metaphorically foreshadows the killing of Paul Allen. Goes out with that loser Patrick Bateman, what a dork. <laughs> Another martini, Paul. There are so many more examples we can cover from Spirited Away and Ratatouille to Goodfellas, but I figured I would leave the rest to you guys in the comments. 
Who knows, maybe a banana means something as well. The real question is, does a psychopath put in the milk or the cereal first? Let me know. As always, I hope to see you in the next video, and if you see an orange, run. Right.